To recreate this view that has a bar chart grouped by two categories, metric type and year, we'll create a calculated field that represents the x-axis. We'll also use the calculated field to set the positioning for the line, which represents the profit margin. And we'll create a horizontal legend with circles. In Tableau, it's super easy to create a group bar chart. You just need to pull two fields in, like year and metric, into the columns. But the problem is when you have year first, the year appears at the top of the chart. And when you switch it and have the metric first, it prioritizes the metric grouping over the year. So to create a bar chart that is grouped by two categories without splitting up the x-axis to be at the top and the bottom, we'll create a calculated field that represents the x-axis, and it'll allow us to customize the positioning of the bars and line. The formulas are in the description if you want to copy and paste, and the Tableau link and Excel are below. If your dataset looks like this and is unpivoted, you're good to go. But if the dataset is pivoted, just unpivot it by selecting the metric fields, Right click and pivot. Now we have it in the format we need to build this. I'm gonna build this using the unpivoted data, but if you're using the second data source I showed, just replace metric field with pivot names and amount with pivot values. First, we need to translate the year into a date, which is the first day of the year. So create a calculated field and say the date function, parentheses, quote, one dash, one dash, plus the string of year. So for example, for year 2023, this will give us one dash, one dash, 2023. Drag this year calculated field into the columns. Then create a parameter, we'll call it width. Keep the data type at float and change the current value to be 40. I'll right click on the parameter to show. Now we're going to create our formula that dictates the x-axis. I'll first show how to achieve this with two measures like profit and sales, and then I'll show how to add on measures. Create a calculated field, we'll call it the x-axis, and say for the case of the attribute metric, when it is sales, then take the attribute of the year calculated field, not the year, and add the width parameter times eight. Then copy that line down and change sales to profit and the multiplier to 10. Replace the year in the columns with our new x-axis calculated field. Add the amount to the rows and metric to the mark as a color then change it to a bar chart. Add the width parameter as a size in the marks and the year calculated field as a detail. I'm gonna filter out the EBITDA so we can see just the profit and sales since our x-axis calculated field only accounts for two measures so far. Right click on the x-axis and change it to a custom format. Four Ys will give us the year. but the years still look messed up. Right-click the x-axis and change it from discrete to continuous. Now the years look correct, but if they don't, you can edit the axis, go to the tick marks, select fixed with a one year interval. If you wanna include more metrics, go to the calculated field for the x-axis and we'll add in another metric. Copy one of the lines down and change it to your third metric. Now we need to adjust the multipliers. I'll remove metric from our filters since we are no longer excluding EBITDA. The multipliers control the spacing, so you might have to go back and change it. It'll also be dependent on how much of the dashboard or worksheet the bar chart covers. So I'm gonna set it to entire view so we can get a better idea of how much space should be between our bars. Now I'll right click on the legend for metric, edit colors and choose my custom color palette. If you wanna add a line to the bar, we need to edit our calculated field for the X axis. The logic we'll write in is for the case of the distinct count of metric, when that is one, then 
our formula. When the distinct count of the metric is three, then the attribute for our calculated field for year plus the width times a multiplier. I like to use the metric in the middle's multiplier, which in this case is profit with a multiplier of nine, because I want the line to start and end within the middle of the bars for that year. Oh, and if we were using two metrics instead of three, you would just change the three to a two in the x-axis formula. We're gonna add a line to the chart that represents the profit margin. Create a calculated field for the profit margin, and we'll do an LOD or level of detail function. Holding fix the year calculated field. If the metric is profit, then take the sum of the amount. Divide that by the same thing, except for instead of profit, we'll use sales. Add profit margin to the rows. Go to the profit margin and the marks and remove the metric coloring. I'll also change it from a bar to a line. Right click on the profit margin field and change it to a dual axis. Remove width from the marks and now we can manually change the size of the line. I'll also change it to yellow within the marks and I want it to have dots on it. The line is helpful at showing the profit margin, but I wanna know specifically at each year what the profit margin is. So I'll drag profit margin into the marks and change it to a text. I'll also edit the default properties so that it's a percentage. Now that we have the line added, I don't like that part of the text is getting covered by the bars. So I'm gonna edit the axis to bring the bars down so the line appears higher. Instead of editing the profit margin axis because we can't go below zero, my workaround is to edit the amount axis to bring the bars lower. I like to try different intervals until the bars are where I want them to be. Then I'll change the tick marks so that there are less of them. I also fidget around with the tick interval until I find one that looks good to me. I'll hide the profit margin axis since we already have the profit margin percentages within the dashboard. I'm just going to paste in a worksheet I already have from another dashboard that has the rounded box I want for the background. And then I'll zoom through the process of creating the background of the dashboard, but I have another video for that. I'll add the bar chart worksheet to the dashboard as a floating object. I also want to remove the amount title for the y-axis, so I'll edit the axis and get rid of the title so there's nothing in it. I also want to format the bar chart so there are no column dividers for the header. and get rid of the grid lines for the rows. And change the font of the bar chart worksheet to be 10, so it's more proportionate to the rest of the dashboard. And make the year x-axis larger, and change it to a darker font. And then I'll add some empty text box in so that we can cover up any lines that we don't want. The nice thing about having a static view and that it fills up the entire view is that no matter how much data comes along, it'll never bump into these little boxes that we're gonna create. You can just copy one of those empty boxes we created and change the text to be the title. I'm gonna create a custom legend for the dashboard using circles instead of squares. Create another worksheet called colors and one called names. On the Names tab, drag Metric into the rows and hide the field label. I'll right-click Format and remove row banding for the pane and the header. 
To hide the ABC, you can drag any measure into the marks and change it from detail to text. Then format that measure to have white text, or whatever your background color is. I also don't want the line above and below, so I'm going to remove the row divider. On the colors tab, I'll also add metric to the rows and metric to the marks. Change it from detail to color and hide the header. And I want these to be circles, so I'll change it from automatic to circle. And remove the row dividers. Another way to resize these circles is to use the slider within the marks. And now we can add these legend worksheets to our dashboard. If you want to add another legend item that isn't one of the bar chart metrics or is from a different data source, we can create a new tab and drag that metric into the marks. Change it from detail to color and make it discrete. Then go from automatic to a circle. Now we can edit the color of the legend and choose one that is similar to the line on our chart. There are two ways we can resize the circle. You can either drag or you can go to the size and use the slider in the marks. And we can bring that new worksheet into the dashboard to represent the profit margin. Add another text box and put the metric name in it, which is profit margin. I'm also going to edit the font in the metric legend so that it matches. I don't like that the legend is so close to the profit margin line, so I'm going to pivot these legends so that we're using up the real estate on the dashboard. To pivot the legend around so that the colors are horizontal, just change metric from the rows to the columns. Do the same thing on the names tab and resize it so we can see all the names. Now I'm going to play around with some sizing and reformatting. I want the order of the colors in the legend to match the order of the colors in the bar chart, starting with sales. So I can go to the Names worksheet, right-click Sort, and choose Descending. And I'll do the same process for the Colors worksheet. The last thing I want to do is play with the spacing of the bars so there's no space between them. I'll edit our x-axis formula and add a constant to the end of sales and EBITDA. I'll try out adding 50 and subtracting 50 first. But now they're a little too close together, so I'll change it to 15. I'm going to adjust the third bar to have a constant of negative 20. Now when we go to the dashboard, we can see that the bars are right next to each other, with no spaces in between. Now we have a bar chart that's grouped by two categories that doesn't split up the x-axis to be at the top and bottom, and a dual axis for a line, which is profit margin, and a horizontal legend with circles that allow us to control the size. 